Welcome to Chat Tsunami. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Chat Tsunami. I'm Sat Tsunami and today I am joined by my very good co-host once again, Adam. Hello there, welcome, welcome. Hi there, it's good to be, in fact it's great to be back after I've yeah. not been able to attend the last couple of weeks, thanks to goddamn life, but yeah. it's been good, it's good to be back. Yeah, well, uh, life and research on this topic thoroughly to do. Yeah, I've that been was... doing that the last few weeks, I've just been, I've been her- hermited <laughs> away, going through the, pouring through the yeah. archives, looking yeah. at the manuscripts. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was the real reason um, you were away. <laughs> the real reason is I'm a massive yeah. nerd. Yeah, what you can't see, guys, is, you know, like the big bushy beard that Adam now has, because he's been, like, into the <laughs> into the, the mountains. Yeah, into the mountains looking for... <laughs> the smell of the smell of monster from my, from my, a... from my lips. <laughs> I've been stayed up for two weeks. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Anyway, yeah, we better move on. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to be on this joke for, like, the whole podcast episode. <laughs> So yeah, as you can see, today we are talking about a genre of games that really holds a special place in our hearts, doesn't it? Oh, definitely. That, of course, being the very humble shooter game, which ever since the, you know, modest Pong to <laughs> to now Call of Duty and Battlefield, yeah, it's, it's a genre that hasn't really died, has it, since it came no, out? No, it's got stronger <laughs> yeah just one that's grown it is it's just there's so many iterations of it but before we go into it and we start talking about our you know our hot takes on shooter games what do we mean by a shooter game well when somebody says to me a shooter game what i instantly think of is a game where shooting is the major activity and the focus of the game now that probably seems quite like quite quite obvious, but yeah. I I use that as a thing to kind of distinguish it from other games. So, for instance, in games like Grand Theft Auto, like Mass mm-hmm. Effect, Fallout, Red Dead Redemption, like you do a lot of shooting in those games. Yeah. But I would argue they're not actually shooters because mm-hmm. shooting isn't the you don't go into you know if you if you're gonna play a Mass Effect game, the chances are you're not going into that game playing it because like the shooting in it you know you want to like explore Mm -hmm. the universe you want to like develop relationships with your crew do all that kind of thing you know explore the galaxy things like that Mm -hmm. while with something like call of duty i'm pretty sure you're going into that game because you want to you know you want to shoot things and you want like high Mm -hmm. kind of octane action so that's the thing i would use to like separate those out as well Mm -hmm. and i'd say the same for kind of games that have like vehicle kind of combat you know you could maybe argue things like star fox maybe as a shooter but i would tend to put that more as vehicle a kind of space flight game, but then it's become a, I'm a shooter purist, so I won't have it diluted with these <laughs> well, <games. yeah. laughs> I would say it was more of an adventure game. Like That's a Star fair Fox, point. Yeah, cause, That's a fair point. Yeah, it's as you were saying, it's like trying to figure out what is definitively a shooter. Like you were saying Red Dead Redemption, like there's a lot of shooting in that game, mm-hmm. but you would class that more as a sandbox game because... yeah. I mean, there is obviously the shooting, but it's not like the central focus of the game. You're more or less focusing on, you know, the adventure aspect, exploring and things. And, yeah. you know, as a cowboy films have once told me, they're rooting to an adventure. Uh, <laughs> that's why I don't watch many cowboy films, can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> Not enough rooting and tooting in them for you. Yeah, no, exactly. It's just, it's uh, not enough at all. No, not in this day and age. So, yeah, basically the games that have more or less like a central focus, I suppose, on uh, this idea of shooting and things. And we're going to like go into that a bit more later on. But one of the other things that we kind of have to talk about is the evolution. Because let's face it, when you think of like modern shooters or shooting games in general, you can't just think of one like setting, can you? No. Because, I mean, of course, you've got your Call of Duty and Battlefield historical World War Two shooters. You've got your modern shooters with like, again, you've got Call of Duty as well. But I mean, even if you look at like, I mean, I, mean, I don't know if you would classify this as a shooter game, like super hot. I, I would classify it as, mm. a, as a shooter game because it is the primary focus of that. And again, I know mm. there's like there's some like melee combat as well, but shooter mm. games have had melee combat. So, you know, it's, I think that's 
I would I would definitely classify it as a, as a shooter game. Especially again, I'm going back to Call of Duty because it, it seems as if like Call of Duty is one of those ones that's perfectly encapsulates this oh, journey oh God, yeah, because yeah. they're a franchise. Same. With in fact no not the same with Battlefield because Call of Duty went from being a historical shooter then it kind of evolved into a modern shooter then it went all the way into the future and now it's kind of reining itself back into like it's modern and you know like historical roots so I mean like when we talk about shooters we can't just like look at it through just one perspective can we no no you've got to as you say you've got to look I mean I think th- there's obviously like some core elements that are the same regardless of you know time period for mm-hmm. a shooter. Like at the end of the day, whether you're getting playing a historical mm-hmm. one or a futuristic kind of shooter, you're still looking for that kind of exciting action mm-hmm. or tension that's within a shooter. But I definitely agree that you know like mm-hmm. they, they are they are separate kind of genres and everything that you can differentiate them out. No, it, there's just so much because it's weird. Like, do you think like on the surface, do you think people underestimate shooter games? Like, whether it's a first-person or a third-person, do you think there's, like, this perception that a lot of them are quite, you know, like, simplified in terms of gameplay and things like that? Well, I definitely definitely think so. I definitely Mm -hmm. think there is a kind of bias out there. Mm -hmm. Like, and I I do think as well, like, I I do think, I agree that people do perhaps look at them as being quite simplistic. I think as well people look at them as being, you know, you you kind of have an image maybe of the people who play some of these games. Oh, yeah. Especially Mm -hmm. if you call it duties, whatever, you have a kind of stereotype. And that's not to say that you know that that Not person happened. that stereotype yeah. isn't rooted in truth because it, it totally is mm-hmm. but i do think it, it can kind of color you know and i think people can miss out on the on the on the nuance nuances of a shooter but i suppose that i suppose maybe that's like other games as well like the, i'm trying to think of some game genres that i'm not as well versed in mm-hmm. Maybe something like a JRPG. I'm not. I don't particularly play play that many JRPGs, mm-hmm. so I, I don't really know all the nuances. And I suppose for somebody who's not really played shooter games, it can on the surface look quite, as you say, look quite yeah. simplistic. And you're like, well, what's the point? You know, like you know, I don't mm-hmm. really see anything distinguishing these ones. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I mean, it's. I suppose for me that would be racing games because yeah. beyond like Mario Kart and things, like I'm not big into games like Forza. Yeah. Um, and things like that. So it's like I kind of just see it as O point A to B you know yeah. that's where you're getting from but there is like so much more to like a lot of racing games and things but you know on the surface it's because i'm not so i suppose the right word is well versed yeah in these kind of games um well totally that's the that's the thing like i think as, as an example I, w- I would say if you were to look at taking like those three categories of shooters mm-hmm. historic modern and futuristic mm-hmm. i think if you, if you look at them the the thing that really evolved as as shooters went into a modern setting and into a futuristic setting was sort of the gadgetry mm-hmm. that kind of went around with it and that became a big focus and that was a big thing that people looked for so you know it was you wanted you wanted you know gr- weapons that would mess with gravity you know and mm-hmm. And you kind of like uh, kind of gadgets that would make gameplay more kind of vertical, you know, and everything like your jump, your jump jets and and things like that that weren't really in historical obvious reasons weren't in, you know, these kind of more historical shooters and things. But it really did. And with that, it kind of it it made nuances to gameplay and actually made makes playing something like something like Titanfall very, very different from playing, you know, one of the Medal of Honor games from the early 2000s. Would you say nostalgia, though, is quite a big factor as well in kind of boosting like the popularity of a franchise? Oh, I, I definitely think so. I mean, you just have to look at how excited people get when developers say, oh, we're taking something back to its roots. You know, that's always something that really, you know, like I, I think I was, did I, did I not post something recently about how, how I was like, I'm back, that's it, boys, I'm back on the, I'm back on the Call of Duty hype train. They're going back to World War II again. Oh, so I, yeah, I'm, yeah. The prime, I'm the prime example of something like this because these were the games that I, I grew up playing. These were the mm-hmm. games that introduced me to shooters and gave me like a lifelong love of, of, of shooter games. Um, so any time that I hear like something like a series like Call of Duty is going back to World War Two, that it just it gets me, gets me all yeah. excited, and I get I fall right back into that nostalgia. Mm. So oh, no doubt. Because it is like if I have to hear the words, and I don't think it just applies to Call of Duty, but if I have to hear the words "boots on the ground" like one more time, because <laughs> <laughs> I, I do remember that time where it was like everything was a space shooter. Um, even yeah. Call of Duty, even I don't know Battlefield never really went that way. It has to- got one. It has got one. Has it? 
it, it was it came about I think a bit earlier than the the, the kind of mm. futuristic trend went to, but it's called it's called like Battlefield twenty one forty two. Oh, of course, his memory. Yeah, so yeah, it yeah. didn't do very well, and it, it's never mm-hmm. quite gone back to that. But you know, God, I can't that, what year it came out. God, yeah. that's awful because I actually do know about that game, and I completely. <laughs> but that's how forgettable it is. Yeah. See? <laughs> because I was thinking more of like the modern series of Battlefield, where they went from Battlefield four. And then they did one called Battlefield Hardline, I think it was oh, called. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Police it was, one, yeah. I did not enjoy that one at all. <laughs> <laughs> I tried it, I really tried, and I was just like, no, this is really not my cup of tea. So I'm thinking of the nostalgia factor again, but even like with licensed games, yeah. there seems to be like a lot of games, especially things like, you know, Star Wars, James Bond, you know, the kind of oh, typical yeah. film and, well, yeah, they're both films. So yeah, like yeah. film genres that will gravitate to this kind of genre of gaming because i mean don't get me wrong star wars is so massive that you can literally make any game mode from that's it. true i that's mean they've true. got racing they've got tactical games rpgs they've, yeah they've just got a whole blanket yeah real-time strategy everything yeah but i mean one of the ones for that that's obviously one of the most popular is like battlefront 2 oh, um, yeah. whether it's the new one or the old one they're both well regarded now even with the controversy for the new one I think that's kind of subsided now, oh, yeah, and everyone's yeah. back in the bandwagon and everything. And it is surprising, like how many people are into that now. Yeah, mm. yeah. It's, it just shows. It shows what can you know. I suppose it's a case study for a game that you can mm. turn around, and if you actually go back and you know, like, put focus on your gameplay and make your game a fun and rewarding experience, then mm-hmm. yeah, people will come back to it. And before, like, we go on to like you know, kind of talk about what makes like a good shooter game, I've got another question for you, and no pressure, but you're live. Um, <laughs> Sorry. So you know how every so often, especially in gaming, there's always that one genre that dominates. Like yeah. when GTA Five came out, it was like shooters. Nowadays, it's kind of battle royale games, or yeah. that's kind of starting to peter out. There'll be a new genre coming over the horizon. But same with FPS games. It, it is weird because you would think with shooter games, it's just like, oh, that's a shooter game, you know, and you don't yeah. really have to look deeper into it. But if you actually do, you know, get over that hurdle of it just being a shooter, you know, as we were saying, there's so many settings that you can put yeah. a shooter game in. So as we said, we've got like you know, the First World War. You know, that game, Darkest of Days, that you were talking yeah. about a couple of weeks ago, that seems to be, like, a perfect mix of everything. Like, yeah, certainly, certainly. They, they certainly mm-hmm. try to, like, branch out the historical. Uh, but also, like, br- bringing in... It's that kind of mashup mm-hmm. of historical settings, but you bring in, like, you know, you take a machine gun to the American Civil War. Mm-hmm. Um, just for <laughs>, laughs. Just for oh, giggles. Yeah. As, you, as you do, you know. As you do. <laughs> so, I mean, we can probably see this in the past, but, you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing. Would you say that, like, different settings in shooter games can cause each game to thrive? So, for example, if you've got a shooter game like Halo and you've got a shooter mm. game like COD that's set in, like, well, I say modern times, but, you know, like, yeah, 2006 yeah, yeah, yeah. modern times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is weird, isn't it, that even though those two are, like, completely different games, you know, they can still coexist with one another? Oh, d- oh definitely. Like, right. it is it is a wide umbrella, certainly. Mm-hmm. Like, the term of shooter... I mean, shooter games also encompass, you know, this first-person shooter games, this third-person mm-hmm. shooter games. It's, it's a very wide net mm-hmm. that I think you can cast, and, you, and you'll gather a lot of very different... Mm-hmm. Of course, they, they, obviously, they all share similar characteristics to an extent mm-hmm. but you will get a wide variety of, of games like not just even his settings but if you think as well there's your kind of michael bay type action mm-hmm. kind of movie shooters one all about design but you've got a lot of tactical shooters as well like your rainbow sixes yeah things like that you know you obviously have your ones that focus on kind of big operatic battles and everything like so mm-hmm. like your star wars battlefronts mm-hmm. um your battlefields as well but then there's also ones as well that narrow it down and make it a much more like you know much more intimate kind of small smaller kind of scale thing and mm-hmm. an example of that is completely is i'm completely blanking on one but it's also something like rainbow six as well like that on the surface oh, is yeah. quite it's well you were a squad of like three or four people or something like that and it's much more small scale but you know it doesn't make it any less exhilarating or anything so there is a complete wide variety of shooter games mm-hmm. and definitely i agree like you're gonna you know as i say you're gonna put cash in it out you're gonna get a lot back um, mm-hmm. and i'm sure you'll find something that you like i mean it's a bit like so it's kind of reminding me of what uh, craig and i were talking about last week about indie games when just that term indie game it's like right it's an indie game but you know what does yeah. that mean and I, I suppose technically it's the same with shooter games like obviously you know like you can say on face value 
oh, it's a game you shoot in. Yeah, it was like, well done, Dr. Satsu, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, like, as we were saying there, and as you uh, just said, you know, you've got your first-person shooters, you've got your third-person ones, you got your cover-based ones, you know, like, so many sub-genres within it. And, I mean, even games like, I don't know if you would include, because technically it is, like, a survival horror, but, like, Left 4 Dead... Mm. Yeah, I'd say that as a shooter game. Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, the focus technically is, like, you would say, like, survival horror, but... That's the thing, like, yeah. again, like, I know I talked about when I said these are some of the games I would discount as shooters, but, mm-hmm. you know, that's that's a that's a very artificial boundary that I, that I impose. You could argue, because I would say Left 4 Dead's a shooter, but at the same time, I wouldn't say something like Resident Evil is a shooter mm-hmm. but you you could you could definitely argue and say well it's got all the it's got all the hallmarks and characteristics and you know you probably could make a very good case that it's a shooter but it's not mm-hmm. something that i i associate as a horror game rather than mm-hmm. a, a shooter game but yeah. you know that's just not official boundary mm-hmm. so again like if we're honest shooting is the the major activity of i would say the majority of games yeah <laughs> i think most games have shooting in some form or another mm-hmm. so you know i think it is that's why i think it is the biggest umbrella term you know, well, one of the biggest. Yeah, because I mean, even if you look at games, and I can't believe I'm bringing Banjo Kazooie back into this <laughs> from the depths of hell, <laughs> bringing it back up. But it's like in some of those, like I'm not saying Banjo Kazooie is like a shooter game by any means. I'm not, but <laughs> there's like levels, and I think the sequel as well, where it's like you can basically use Kazooie, the bird that you carry around, as yeah. like a shooting weapon, and. It's kind of small things like that. It's all for puzzle solving, you know, and all of yeah. that. But it's like, it goes to show that even in games like that, you know, like incorporate some kind of, you know, shooting mechanic. It's not just... And I mean, it doesn't have to necessarily be like a shooting mechanic. It can be, you know, having to aim something and throw it or yeah. which, can I just say, is usually the worst, <laughs> the worst thing ever. I can't remember what it was. I think of all things, I don't know why I'm like bringing back these memories, but have you ever played a series of unfortunate events? No, no, never have. Like the video game for it, I mean. Was it, was well, it like the, was it a film or something? Aye, there was the film and there was the book series as well. Oh, fair enough, yeah. But I always remember there was one level in it that just, it, it is weird because it's a game that you can definitely sit down and complete it in a day, which is fine. Yeah. But there was one level that really annoyed me where you had to aim your, I can't remember what it was, if you had a slingshot or something that was wasn't in the films or the books you know it was just like <laughs> artificially you had to like shoot things yeah. down and it was the worst thing ever because all these like things are all these targets are going by and you're just shooting everything and you're like i can't do it i can't do it it does just... seem to, it does seem to be like that because that, it's funny you saying mm-hmm. that and it reminds me of some of the the, the t- movie tying games they used to make in the kind of like late 80s early 90s mm-hmm. when they would take sort of these games and then almost make them into make them into shooters because it was the, the easiest kind of game forms to make even though mm-hmm. it didn't really make sense in terms of the oh, i'm trying to remember um, i'm sure like the back to the future game or something when they made like yeah. back to the future part three that it kind of was turned into a shooter and you're like why <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. okay it's the wild west but it doesn't do that much shooting yeah what i recall in the film but it's because it's such a it's because it's such a ubiquitous like you know mechanic i think there's so many shooting games so i think it's almost mm-hmm. natural you're like well let's just let's do that let's take this franchise and, and put it into this you know in this box of, mm-hmm. of quote-unquote shooter so yeah it's just just a funny thing you're absolutely right though because i mean if you look at like james bond that's like yeah. one of the more like popular examples i suppose yeah of like a game franchise that was a film and then they translated it, but it was like a good translation. It wasn't like they they just like slapped a coat of paint onto, you know. Well, it started off it. as a good it started off as a good some some of the more recent James Bond oh, that you God, yeah. have been woeful. I'll yeah. probably bring up one of them uh, as, as we go on. But definitely, no, initially, you're totally right. Very good transition. Yeah, which brings us on to our next point, because I'm actually curious to hear what you have to say about this. You've kept, <laughs> your, you've kept your card close to your chest on this one, I must say. <laughs> For once in my life, I've shown that subtlety. Basically, we were discussing this off-stream, and we were discussing like what really makes a shooter game good. So we've come up with three categories that we're going to judge this in. So the three of them are story, gameplay, and the idea of it being either a single or multiplayer game. So we're going to kind of go into that. The first thing, of course, we're going to start on is the story. Honestly, I am ready to jump into this one. (laughs) If you want to start, I don't mind if you want to start. No, no, I'll let you start first because I'm going to be ranting a lot probably about this, but... Oh, well, well, I'll make my my little bit quick so we can get into that. Oh, no, no. (laughs) Take take your time. (laughs) 
So yeah, what makes a shooter game good in terms of story? Do you know what? It's funny. Just just before I answer that question, mm-hmm. it's actually really funny because when we brought these categories out, I went into this and I was thinking like, what what's the most important thing for making a good shooter? And in my mind, I was like, well, it's clearly gameplay. It has to be gameplay, like, you know. But then the more I thought about it and the more I started to, like, reminisce on the shooter games that I love and that are my favorites, mm-hmm. I'm like, no, the story, I think, is actually the most important aspect. Like with so many other mm-hmm. videos, I think the story is the most important aspect because I believe that you could take a shooter that has sort of mediocre or problematic gameplay mm-hmm. and if you put a good story in there, like, it will elevate it and it will you will want to push you and you wouldn't even care. I think of something like, I think of some, one of my favorite games of all time, Bioshock Infinite, mm-hmm. um, which I class as, which I would class as a, as a shooter. I love I love virtually every single thing about Bioshock Infinite. I think it's an absolute masterpiece of a game. I know it's quite divisive, mm-hmm. um, but that's my personal opinion. But I think if there's one criticism you can fairly level at it, I do think the gameplay is a bit problematic at points and it is a bit repetitive and I'm not. it's not the best mm-hmm. shooter gameplay out there, I'd say. But for me, the story was just so fantastic that I just couldn't care. I don't care. <laughs> I'll go play Bioshock Infinite now and I don't care about yeah. the gameplay problems it's amazing another game uh, another one of my favorites is spec ops the line which oh, yeah. on the surface is just such bland third person shooting it really doesn't add anything new but oh my god that story is amazing it's <laughs> honestly one of the best stories in gaming i think so just thinking about what makes a good video game good uh, sorry good uh, shooter story it's funny because i think for a lot of video game stories i think it's really important really important for your it's uh, important to have a focus on character Mm-hmm. Um, especially for things like RPGs, you know, or, or these kind of type of open world games. But for me, with a shooter, I almost think characters are actually not as important. Especially if you're playing them in a first person perspective, I don't think it's always the most important to have like a you know a really well developed character and everything that you might need for one of, for a game that's in a third person you know perspective. But there's something like something like Bioshock, like the character you play as that Jack. It's just like. They don't. You don't ever hear them speak. I don't think in the game, and they're not. They, they get some. They get backstory and stuff, but they're not a particularly well developed character. But mm-hmm. you know that game has so much. The, the story of that game and the world that you're in is the real like hook and the thing that you get invested in. Yeah, like I think I think as well. Shooters are an interesting, interesting kind of video game genre to actually tell very like to tell really intriguing and actually like thought provoking stories. As I said, like one of the and I just mentioned it just a few minutes ago, but. A game like Spec Ops The Line, I think, has maybe one of the most innovative and like thought-provoking stories I've ever seen in a video game because it really challenges. It really like delves into you know, it's a lot about morality and sort of mm-hmm. war and themes like that. But it also really delves into like what it's like playing a shooter game and what you're supposed yeah. to feel mm-hmm. and sort of like the numbing experience. Then really makes you like challenge that so i think i think a shooter is actually a really a really interesting format to, to try and tell an innovative story and, and to try and tell something with twists and turns and to, and to really make you think but again i think the most important thing is just to get a story that invests you because you know that's what's gonna that's what's gonna drive you through so so i don't know if i've actually answered your question or no. just a big ramble there but that's my that's sort of my yeah. initial thoughts no i'll be expecting the thesis on my desk on monday <laughs> You know, oh God. <laughs> my virtual no. desk, can I just say? No. <laughs> yeah, the social distancing. But yeah, no, I completely agree. Funny you should mention that because I was thinking of Bioshock Infinite as well. I played that, I think, oh, a good couple of months ago in stream. And I absolutely love, I agree with you 110%. I love the story of that. Like at the end, I kind of just like put down my controller and thought, wow, this is just such a good game. Yeah, the gameplay did not entice me whatsoever. Like, the yeah. gameplay was alright. I mean, they had its interesting moments, but I do agree. It felt repetitive, and then, oh, it was just another coat of paint on things, and you know. Yeah. The story definitely saved that. And I do think, like, for a shooter game, I think a lot of people underestimate, you know, having or needing a good story for a shooter game. Because one of the examples I can think of off the top of my head is Halo 4. I think, personally, that Halo 4, in terms of gameplay, is infinitely better than its predecessors. Yeah. So, like, the fact you can run... Yeah, no, you can run, can you? Like, without a... Oh, yeah, they, they, they yeah, got yeah. The, yeah, they got the sprinted there. Yeah, it's like things like you can run and everything, and it just it plays really well. Same for the fifth game, which... Yeah. Uh, we've got a whole episode on that, if you want to listen to it. But <laughs> the long and short of it is, like, the gameplay itself is solid, but the story is just awful and that's the thing though it's like do you know what it reminds me of it reminds me of school trying to make something fun to do you know but you know inherently the thing that they're trying to teach you isn't fun so it's like (laughs) oh go shoot these because the grand wizard in the center of the sun and you're like i don't 
I don't care. I'm, I'm sorry. I just don't care about this story. Yeah. You know, like, especially for Halo, and that's a whole other rant. It does. It makes you feel as if you're not playing a game, you're struggling through a game. Yeah. If you know what I mean. And I know that sounds like a weird thing to say, but it's the, the whole point of a game is you're supposed to either be having fun or kind of having, like, an experience that you can go through. And, you know, I mean, you know that way where you had, like, the... Again, going back to school, you had, like, the kind of... I don't know why I'm thinking water cooler chat, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, the school equivalent of the water cooler is yeah. the playground chat. The playground yeah. chat, yeah. And you would, like, be talking to people saying, oh, did you play that new level of, like, say, Time Splitters? Which, again, that's another one where the gameplay is not as good, especially, like, Time Splitters 2. And, yeah, especially now. Yeah, yeah like, the... Oh god, the gameplay did not age well in that game. But like the story in it is just so fun, and the characters are so fun. Yeah. And I think that's another important thing, which brings me on to my rant. Characters. I think going back to one of your points, you were saying like the main character should. I mean, were you saying they should basically be like a blank slate? Well, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. have to be. Yeah. It doesn't. I, it doesn't have to be. I. I. For me mm. personally, I don't think it matters as much having like a really mm. like likable and well developed character. Like you, you might you need something like a, a Red Dead Redemption or another another game like that. You know, where it's yeah. like kind of mm-hmm. much. I. I personally would think don't think you need to have that in a in a shooter. Um, especially a first person. It's a bit of a weird one because it's like, you know when you're playing through the game and you know you have full control over this character and then all of a sudden, like, the game takes your character into a cutscene and it acts in a way that you wouldn't act. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, so then that takes away, the it kind of breaks the immersion of hold on a minute I, yeah. I would have walked into the room like that you know but I see what you mean it's like probably not the main you know maybe it's not like the main focus in terms of characters but I think definitely like supporting characters are very important yeah. when it comes to uh, shooter games and I'm gonna reel back on to an example that I don't think I've been able to rant on Chat Tsunami about, so I am very happy to announce my premiere of <laughs> my rant on Battlefield 4. I hate it. Like, I absolutely loathe this game, 100%, and every time, like, I went into the chat, like, this is how bad it was, I went into, like, a video to see what other people thought about the game, and all of the chat, like, comments, or the comments and, like, YouTube videos all seemed very positive about the game, (laughs) and I was like why though like and i'm not even like going into the multiplayer this is solely for the single player i absolutely hated the campaign if it's even the worst cod i'm gonna say this and this is my hot take even the worst call of duty campaign was better than battlefield 4 i'm gonna put that out there and the reason i hated it so much was one character called irish in it now initially like basically you play as like a squad of is it marines or like what is it like uh, i've not, i've not played battlefield 4 i'll i'll, I'll say i, I, I mean, presume it's marines. it's usually marines yeah <laughs> like <laughs> after that i haven't played it in a while either yeah maybe it's marines like i haven't played this in years i'm gonna preface this as well so if i get any like details wrong then <laughs> yeah apologies in advance but essentially you go through the game with that and this is how i remember it so it could be wrong but the way i remember it is you go through and um, the game with a squad of marines and your i think it's your captain or your leader gets killed so in the first mission you get grouped together with this guy irish <laughs> and every single time he has a chance to fuck up he fucks up like royally and hard and it's really infuriating as like you know like going back to that thing of oh my character would never do that like you don't get the chance to tell him off he just stands up and he's just like oh i'm gonna do this um i'm gonna you know like i'm 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 gonna go away and you know disobey orders and that's what he does he disobeys orders and it ends up that you get i I think you get not court-martialed but you get disciplined for it so then you get a new captain because he went away and did his own thing. And even when he's got a new captain, he starts just talking back the entire time. And then the turning point that really like infuriated me was there's a bit in Shanghai where you're sailing away and I can't remember, there's like a explosion that goes off 
and you're supposed to be on like this secret mission where you know you're supposed to be getting a vip getting them out that's what you're supposed to do in the game and then this guy like starts yelling to all of the people like all of the people that are trying to evacuate and say oh come over here we've got a battleship over here morality aside it's like wh- what are you doing <laughs> it's just it is <laughs> absolutely like baffling and again like i'm not here to debate you know whether he should have or he shouldn't have done that but it's the fact that every single time he does what he wants as a soldier you know and it's weird because you would think that would be something that the main character was doing but it's almost as if you've got like a window into this you know alter protagonist's life you're like what is this game and i seem to be the only one that has issues with this guy because it's just so infuriating and that's what put me off that game entirely because maybe it's just i haven't played like the other games but i I can never get invested in battlefield like stories i played battlefield 3 and battlefield 3 is by far one of my favorite like multiplayer games which i know we'll come on to but in terms of the story I felt it was very, very weak. You know, like, just your generic, a guy's got a nuclear bomb, let's stop the bad guy, and it's like, you're boring. (laughs) It's it's like, you're very, very boring, and it's like, I don't know whether the developers thought the gameplay would hold it, because here's the thing, like, I know we're going to go and talk about gameplay in a minute, but when the gameplay fails, like, Games are going to age. There's absolutely nothing you can do about that. Like, as soon as you make a game, relatively, the the mechanics of it are going to be set in stone. Maybe there'll be, like, a couple of tweaks and things, but relative. I mean, if you look at Call of Duty, for example, you know, they've got updates and things to change the guns, but inherently, you point and you shoot. Like, that is is the core gameplay. Like, that's always going to be the same. That's going to age. But at least you think if you've got a good story to kind of back that up. Yeah. Like, I mean, if you look at um, one of the games I was playing the other day was um, Destroy All Humans, which technically I would class that as a shooter, probably. I would probably class it, because I don't, yeah. I don't quite know what else I would class it as. Yeah. It's like, a, it's a really weird blend of genres for that one. But if you look at it from the perspective of, like, being a, you know, shooter game, I tried doing the final boss. Could not do it. I <laughs> I just kept getting my butt kicked. I don't know why it was because I didn't have the right upgrades or what it was, but I just kept getting my butt kicked. But at the same time, I can't look at the game and say, oh, it's, you know, oh, it's terrible completely. Yeah. I can't completely write it off. And the reason being I can't write it off is because it had such, like, a good story to it. And even though it's been remade and everything, at least the story holds up rather than, you know, like, for example, Battlefield or even some of the worst Call of Duties. It's like, you can go back and play it and just be, like, completely bored and be like, well, why am I playing that when I could play the other ones, you know, later on in the series? Because, I mean, that is a worry when games evolve so much that the past games are kind of left behind. Yeah. And it's like, as long as it's got a good story that can kind of prop it up, at least for single-player ones, but as long as it can, like, prop it up, then that should, hopefully... Like, I'm not saying it's like a a fix-all solution, but it's like, you know, the idea of, like, duct tape and, you know, a hole in the middle of like the middle yeah. of your boat or something and just sailing along yeah it's like you're slowly sinking but you kind of think it's okay it's okay <laughs> we can make it out <laughs> we've got this we've got this and yeah it's I, I personally think like definitely story has to keep it afloat um characters as well and i mean don't get me wrong like sometimes you just want you know a mindless game which is what took me aback i have to admit with um you know the new black ops game yeah cold war because I was just expecting, you know, just a straight go from point A to point B, kill this, kill that, blah, blah, blah. And then they introduced, like, RPG elements and things like that. All of which really didn't matter in the end. <laughs> like, no, and they're not super. Yeah, like, I mean, some of them did. So, like, there was one mission that was, like, th- that, that's a weird thing. One of the best missions in the game wasn't even a shooter. There was, like, trying to poison some tea, which, you know, okay. very sore spot for us Brits, you know. <laughs> 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 but, monstrous i know terrible a war crime in itself but <laughs> but yeah it's definitely something that like as long as you're engaged in it i think definitely as long as you're engaged which kind of brings me on to the next point about gameplay so what 
do you think in terms of like gameplay makes a good shooter? You know, other than being competent. <laughs> yeah. Because well, of... no, definitely. Like you want a, you want a good. You need to have that good mm-hmm. core kind of gameplay loop. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because we we just, we discussed this point a little bit earlier at the beginning, mm-hmm. where we, where you asked me about shooters having this kind of image of being simplistic, mm-hmm. um, not developing. And I agree that is image. But I actually think, ironically, that I think the most important thing for a shooter g- gameplay to have is is simplicity. To be honest, oh, yeah. I think having certainly. It's not to say that you can't add you know things to it. You can't add bells and mm-hmm. whistles and everything and add things. But I think at its heart. You are coming to a shooter game to shoot things, and you mm-hmm. want that to be good. And I think the simpler it is, that sort of core mechanic of you know the gun goes bang bang and the, mm-hmm. and the and the bad men die. You know, that <laughs> yeah. need, I I do think the simplicity is the best is the best for that. And mm-hmm. then you can build on top of that if you want to add things onto it. I think as well an important thing is you really want some kind of weight to your weapons. You mm-hmm. want to feel like you know if you if you're shooting a weapon, you're like, whoa, this is, this is doing damage. You know, mm-hmm. this, like, I'm sure there's like. I've certainly played games. I'm sure you've played games as well, uh, shooter games where you get weapons and you're like, this just this just feels pathetic. Like oh, there's some yeah. where I mean, some ones with grenades in some in some games where you throw a grenade and it's just like a tiny explosion. You're like, what the hell was that? Like you know, like, and it's just kind of deflating. You know, you want like good weight. You know, you want something. You want something like like Doom 2016 mm-hmm. where like the weapons feel like incredibly meaty and you you fire that like super shotgun. <laughs> and, and you know like yeah. demons explode in, into giblets and, and you want things like that so i especially for a gameplay uh, for a shooter sorry you want you want that weight to your uh, to your weapons and everything i think as well i think it's important to get gameplay that matches your setting kind of going back to our early discussion about different settings mm-hmm. in shooter gameplays um so for instance if you are doing a futuristic one it makes sense to have you know it makes sense to have to have jetpacks and maybe wall running and things that kind of you know broaden the game space out and make it more make it more horizontal make it more vertical like that but if you are if you are setting it on a more kind of quote unquote boots on the ground a modern or a more kind of historical setting then you you do want that maybe a more kind of simplistic like mm-hmm. a more kind of weighty slugging it round you know crashing into bits of bits of wall and, and things like that you want that kind of one so that was one of the things i had a problem with that uh, call of duty world war ii is i felt i felt like as much as they'd gone back to a world war ii setting they kind of kept like you know the kind of the michael bay-esque kind of action mm-hmm. from from the more kind of from the black ops and the kind of advanced warfare and, and series like that um and i just felt for me it didn't it didn't it didn't gel properly mm-hmm. i think one thing about gameplay in a shooter is i think there's a big danger of over designing it and oh, what yeah. i mean by that is i think especially i think especially for sequels i think you know you can you can you can make it you can design a really really good competent and really fun shooter with really good weighty like gameplay and really fun uh gun gunplay and everything mm-hmm. but then i feel like when they get a sequel sometimes they're like oh well we need to do something we can't just leave it you know even if it's perfect like, we're, we're, we're gonna tinker with it and try and over design it mm-hmm. and something like doom eternal for me, like I loved Doom 2016's gameplay, and I thought it was perfect. It was such a good blend of fun and mm-hmm. and, and you know like action and everything and excitement. But then I felt when Eternal, like it was still there, and the, the core gameplay was still there, and it was still fun. But they really overdesigned it, and really added added a lot of things that I were like, this this has just made me like it took the kind of fun out of it, and I was just like, this has become becoming more complicated. And this is what I mean: it became more complicated, and it really kind of jarred with the action. For me, like there's there's mm-hmm. one enemy they have in Doom Eternal who basically you can only shoot them at a very very specific point. And what Doom's gameplay relies on is fast, frenetic. You know, you're jumping around, kind of blasting like tons of demons and everything. But this really slowed it down and made you be like really patient and have to wait for exactly specific points. And it, it made it a really frustrating experience. Mm-hmm. So I think over tinkering with a game, with the gameplay can be very dangerous for a shooter, especially if you're onto a a winning a winning formula no i completely agree with you there the first one that actually came to mind was halo uh, when you said over complicating because as i said like the gameplay itself is okay but a lot of the weapons that they use like they're supposed to be futuristic you know oh look at us we're in like this weird alien world but they just felt too you know that way when you look at a design and you kind of think i don't know what i'm looking at here yeah, and then when you shoot it, you're like, I, I still don't know what I'm shooting. <laughs> I mean, if you go back to like more simple, like super soldier like stories, I mean, look at Star Wars Republic Commando. That came out in what 2005, maybe yeah. six. In fact, no, it I think was maybe there. maybe 2004 actually. Actually, yeah, no, it would have been sooner because it definitely came out before Revenge of the Sith came out. Yeah. It was kind of that in between middle, but but I mean, if you look at that, like I had really good mechanics for the time. Oh god. And I mean, that wasn't like over the top, like God forbid, I can imagine it getting made nowadays. Yeah, you know, and you know, like I can imagine all the bits of armor coming off and just being like, no, stop. 
<laughs> Don't add the cod piece. What are you doing? It's just like everything being over designed. Because that is like kind of going off on a slight tangent from mm-hmm. gameplay, but that is like quite a problem, I would say. With yeah. if you, because I mean, it even happens in other shooters. I mean, one of the ones I'm kind of thinking of is Gears of War. That is a weird, weird franchise, I have to say. Like the first yeah. three or four, technically, if you include, you know, Judgment. So I'm thinking uh, for any, you know, Gears of War fans out there, I'm thinking of the original trilogy and the spin off Judgment, where the were all kind of like relatively similar games and then for some reason in 4 and 5 they kind of like took a drastic turn and they started including robots and all these kind of flesh like worse fleshy monsters that just you know again you're looking at it thinking what what am I actually looking at here yeah. what am I shooting and it's like there was no kind of clear how to put it like no clear kind of correlation between you know you shooting it and then thinking oh I've done a good job I've killed it it just almost felt like oh it's an objective there we go D- can I get my break yeah. now, you know? <laughs> can, I, can I put my controller down? And going back to what you were saying as well about the weight as well, that is, like, the weight of weapons and things like that. I 100% agree with that. I was actually watching a video from, I don't know if you've seen him, I think it's, I think his name's The Axe Man or something on YouTube. Oh, I've seen a couple of things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, something I never really noticed. It's weird because it was something I never really, like, thought about too much. Like, you know, sound design and, you know, feeling yeah. a weapon being you know, impactful. And then I was watching one of his videos and they summed it up perfectly and he was just basically saying how I can't remember what games he was describing. I think it was like comparing Call of Duty Modern Warfare to I think it was Black Ops, like the new one. Yeah. Well, Cold War. I keep calling it Black Ops. But you know sure, <laughs> it's, sure, let's face it. Time. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it is far too long. Like, I have made a joke about this saying the full title's basically Call of Duty, Black Ops, Cold War, and Knuckles. Feet Revengeance, <laughs> you know? It's just such a stupidly long title. But um, that, that's another rant for another day. <laughs> that is a totally other rant. But, yeah, it's like, I have to admit, I feel as if sometimes when I'm playing that game, I'm like shooting a pea shooter in Cold War. Whereas for Modern Warfare, for all it's like, for all it's like terrible like decisions in some parts of it at least the gameplay was solid and you genuinely felt like that I I was just thinking of that when you were talking about like Red Dead and you know games that have shooting but they don't really consider themselves a shooter Yeah, I I never felt like see especially in like GTA I never thought that it was impactful when you shot someone in it. Oh, yeah. It almost felt as if, you know, it's like, you know, you pull a gun, you have to shoot the enemy, and then that's it. And it, it sounds really like a really weird thing to complain about, but it's like it's a huge part of the design to kind of immerse someone into the game. Yeah. Whereas, you know, because the whole point is if you're playing a shooter game, you're putting yourself in the shoes of that character. You know, you're going in and, you know, whether it's Halo, whether it's Doom, whether it's Call of Duty, Battlefield, or whether you're up spending hours of supremacy on Battlefront 2, my god, that is that is a game mode and a half. And I don't mean that in a good way, but that's another rant. <laughs> Uh, have you actually seen that gameplay mode? No, I, I can imagine there was oh. like um, there was one in there was one in the the newer Battlefield games uh, called mm-hmm. which I actually quite enjoyed uh, yeah. some sometimes anyway. But there was one called Operations. Mm-hmm. Um, in I think Battlefield One was the first one to introduce it, which was like large. They usually tack together at least two or three maps together, mm-hmm. and it was like a long like you know there was lots of different rounds you'd have mm-hmm. over that. And I really enjoyed some of that, but sometimes it could just be like, especially if you're mm-hmm. on the losing side, it's an absolute frustration. Like, yeah. like oh my god, I'm gonna be here for like two hours mm-hmm. getting my ass kicked. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly the same. Because it's like this tug of war where it's like you have to do a huge ground battle and you have yeah. to like go back and forth. And that's another game that I, th- I think it's a good game. Like Battlefront 2 is a good game. It's relatively well designed. But at the same time, it's like, oh God, like that game mode especially is just so long. Like it takes yeah. ages for anybody to win. And then once you win, you have to fight on like the respective, the, whoever's lost, you have to fight in their ship. And <laughs> if you lose... It puts you back onto the ground, mm. and then you have to do that all over again. Oh, jeez. So, it, it just goes back and forth and back and forth. And, I mean, that's probably some people's cup of tea. And that's a whole, like, other debate of, you know, whether or not that's your kind of game mode. Because in shooter games yeah. that are, like, it, it's not just, you know, kind of, like, localised just to, you know, team deathmatch and things like that. Yeah. And, I mean, you can even get, like... 
because uh, I mean we've been talking kind of about in the sense of like um, Battlefield and Call of Duty you know those typical ones but I mean you could even extend it to like 6v6 games like Overwatch um, oh yeah, yeah yeah I'm just trying to think what else there, there's like Overwatch there's, there's Apex Legends Apex Legends yeah, yeah like Valorant you know there's just so yeah, many yeah. and is it Rogue Company I think's the new one coming out no it's or, not a new one I it? mean it's been out but I think that's the new kind of one that's been like slowly creeping in Twitch <laughs> to be yeah. popular and you think, oh, interesting, interesting. But there are, there's just so many. They've all got different mechanics though, they've all got different gameplay. Because that's the thing though. In fact, that kind of leads on to our next point, or like a final point about what makes a good shooter, is the aspect of single player versus multiplayer. Now, I was just talking there about like, you know, like Overwatch and you said Apex, you know, Valorant and those kind of games yeah. but they don't really have a story like they've got a story in the background but it's kind of the thing that you have to like go and research and i'm getting horrible flashbacks of halo 5 when i say that where the it's lore. just that <laughs> the lore it's just that chart that pops up <laughs> Oh my god, oh it's awful. So yeah, just quickly to recap, um, if you play Halo 5 when it came out, there was a chart that, I think it was 343 Industries or whoever was publishing it at the time, put up online and they were like, oh who are these new characters? Well if you want to find out who this person is, you have to play Halo 3 ODST. If you want to see who this person is, you have to read this comic, you know, <laughs> utterly ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous utterly ridiculous but yeah it's like at least with those kind of games like with overwatch especially y- you know it's like you don't really have to have a story there. yeah i mean you can do like it kind of helps explain why you're in the middle of gibraltar with a big beefy german guy in a suit of armor you know <laughs> and you know a korean girl in a mech suit you know it's like why why how did we get here why why is there a french person sniping me over there you know yeah like you don't really, I suppose, need to have a story, but the downside of that, I would say, is its mortality. Well, like, that's true. I mean, you can make, like, the best multiplayer game ever. And don't get me wrong, I think things like Warzone, I think they've just hit the money load there. Oh, God. Um, any, like, successful, you know, battle royale. I mean, look at Fortnite. Fortnite yep. is just, that is going to go on forever probably, until they bring out Fortnite 2. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised if they brought out, like, Fortnite 2 or something. Or you'll get, uh, or you'll get the, they'll, they'll... Like, in the far yeah, future. Or, or some, somebody, will, somebody will do the Fortnite mm. idea better. Sort of like what Fortnite did to uh, PUBG. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> they'll take the idea and just, and just do it better, mm-hmm. and then people will, people will desert. See, I mean, they are, like, their ace in the hole is definitely their aesthetic. Like the oh, whole yeah, design yeah, yeah. and everything. Like the gameplay is good and everything. And that's another one that's not got a story. But at the same time... Well, I don't know. <laughs> I've never played Fortnite, you know. This is my gaming confession. I'm in the booth. I'm, I'm confessing that I've never played uh, Fortnite. Um, you've revised it. Yeah. You're, you're, in, you're in good company. <laughs> But at the same time, though, it's like, because that's so, like, ridiculously popular, same with, as I said, Warzone and things, that's never really going to die anytime soon. Or if it is, you know, at least it's kind of prolonged. Whereas with, like, see if you look at games like Call of Duty, and I know I keep going back into this, but it seems to be like, it seems to be like the middle ground for this genre. It seems to be like every time you think of an example Call of Duty, like one of them will somehow be able to answer yeah. whatever question you have. I remember years later going back to play Modern Warfare 2, I think it was, because that was like my very first uh, game for the Xbox 360. Absolutely loved it, never really played the multiplayer. My first like multiplayer game was Halo 3 with a friend and that was like some MacGyver stuff like I had to hit <laughs> because I didn't have the adapter I had to like hook up my Xbox to my laptop at the time and like nice. kind of bridge the connection it was, it was super complicated well not, not overly complicated but you know it was just like oh it was different times like now I just turned on my Xbox and that's it like it's got it built in you know simpler <laughs> simpler times these days um, but I remember going back online to play it because I thought, oh, this is a great game. You know, I can't wait to see what it's like. And I went online and it was, I don't know, have you ever been on a Call of Duty game like years later? Um, I don't think years later. I think I, I think I've been like one, one call, one COD 
game mm-hmm. back, you know, from the current yeah. one. I don't think I've ever gone back mm-hmm. more than that. Because, I mean, maybe it was, like, it's always, like, one or two COD games, because they always come out so close to one another. But yeah. I remember playing it. And if anyone's listening, and you, you'll probably know, like, what I'm talking about if you played these games, but it would be, like, this random text in the corner of the screen, and it would be, like, join our whatever server oh, do you want bots? You know, like, all of this, like, all these weird spammy messages and just, it was overrun with hackers, essentially. It was just absolutely overrun with hackers, overrun with people, you know, that just didn't care about the game. And the reason being, of course, because the servers weren't updated. Or not updated, but they weren't maintained. They were just kind of left to, you know, like, I don't want to say rot, you know, maybe rust, but nobody really no one really cared you know it was like oh the new game's out and that's the thing it's like and i I don't know why this is a um scene that i always quote on the channel but have you ever seen toy story 2 yeah yeah, yeah. you know the flashback scene where (laughs) where um or not a flashback but it's like a nightmare where woody thinks he's gonna get replaced and andy Uh, grabs him yeah he says (laughs) he like holds out his hand and he goes I don't want to play with you anymore. And then he falls to the bin and it's like the whole nightmare. That's honestly what, like, shooter games like that that come out, like, yearly. Oh, totally, yeah. That is definitely the kind of mindset, I think, for a lot of companies where they're just like, yeah, we've got the new game, you know, coming out. So, yeah, screw it. We'll just, it doesn't matter. And it's just, so I think in that sense, if a game's popular enough, then definitely it'll have like at least it'll have a following to keep it alive. Yeah. Whereas well, no, sorry, I was just gonna say like I definitely think for mm-hmm. for a, a multiplayer, I, I think you need a different focus like mm-hmm. if you're making a single player or a multiplayer shooter. Mm-hmm. And I I think you need that especially for the multiplayer. You need that addictive gameplay loop. You need that thing that's gonna keep you <laughs> yeah. gonna keep you coming back. For me, for me, games like Battlefield, Battlefield One, I think was the mm-hmm. was the one for me that just just hit the spot, and that was I was hooked, I was addicted, I was on that yeah. like you know most day, most days mm-hmm. of most nights, well, say most nights and most days of the week, you know, absolutely addicted. Some of the Call of Duties as well, I got mm-hmm. really like into those like, stuff like Black Ops. I think that was maybe the height for me of, of that kind of addictive mm-hmm. like oh one more match, you know, and then oh, five yeah, hours later, like my God, it's six in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> what have I um, done? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So for, definitely for that. I think mm. it's what you really want if you want to get a game. And Fortnite seems to have got like that. As you, as you, oh, yeah, yeah. Fortnite seems to have hit that exactly that sweet spot. Mm-hmm. Um, and Overwatch as well seems to have, seems to mm. have, games like that have found that kind of sweet mm. and addictive spot. What I always thought was interesting is it's interesting how some games struggle to kind of get a good single player shooting experience and a good multiplayer mm-hmm. shooting experience. Something like Call of Duty, like you might argue that perhaps. Perhaps neither of them are like amazing mm-hmm. in their own, but they're but they're both they're both good. And they're both serviceable. They both yeah, like, yeah. work well and you can have a lot of fun. But I think it's something like again going back to Doom twenty sixteen, mm-hmm. like Doom twenty sixteen had a multiplayer mode, but it completely bombed, <laughs> and no, nobody really played it. And like I've seen some things saying people saying it was underrated, mm-hmm. but it had a great single player. Everybody loved well, I think everybody, but you know, but the majority yeah. of people loved the single player. Found it really fun, really engaging absolutely loved it but the multiplayer just failed to resonate and i think part of it was because they tried to they, they struggled to match mash the gameplay from that doom the kind of friendly gameplay into a more kind of you know into a call of duty like mm-hmm. um cl- you know like weapon class system and, yeah. and, and things like that it was it was an awkward fit but yeah i, I know there have been others as well that i'm blanking in my mind now but doom i think doom 2016 mm-hmm. is the perfect example of that it, it just seems mm-hmm. difficult that some games can't seem to marry it up because i think it, you do need a, a different one and for me, like the best kind of multiplayer shooters have been the ones that made me feel like I'm part of something bigger. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm part of a big battle. So something like Battlefield, I'll go back to Battlefield, I'll go back to Battlefield 1 again because I, mm-hmm. I love it. But something like Battlefield 1, where some of the Star Wars Battlefronts as well, where I really felt like, you know, I'm, I'm part of this huge battle like, mm-hmm. going on and everything like that. Well, I, I have enjoyed other ones like Call of Duty where it's been smaller scale. But for, the, for me, those are the ones that have really have drawn my attention. While there's something like a single player, you really want you want yourself, you want your character yeah. to be the focus mm-hmm. of the action, you know, you want everything to kind of revolve around you because that's what it should be, so perhaps being part of something bigger isn't really as important a thing, while in a multiplayer for me, I'm like, I, I want to look around and be like, oh my god, there's a whole separate other <laughs> battle going on over there while I'm, while I'm fighting here, so yeah. it's, that, it's that scale thing mm-hmm. um, so yeah, it is interesting No, I was just thinking when you said about Doom you know, being the awkward fit, it actually reminded me of, was it Dead Space 2 that had a multiplayer? Mm-hmm. I don't Think. know I'm that. Sure uh, if it F. Planks is in there. Certainly, I think Dead Space 3 had that co-op thing, but I've actually had a multiplayer. I think it did technically have, like, not a good one, 
by any means. It definitely had a, <laughs> it definitely had something, but it, it wasn't yeah. good, whatever it was. And again, it's like that idea of because multiplayer, you know, online multiplayer shooters are so popular that a lot of games just kind of slap on. Because yeah. it was as we were saying at the very beginning, kind of only like look or kind of looping back to what we were saying at the very beginning, how, you know, game companies used to just slap, like, a title onto, you know, like, a franchise or something and be like, okay, Jim, you're now a shooter. It's like, did I want to be an action RPG? You're a shooter, Jim. (laughs) It's like, just take it, you know, you're a shooter. Whereas nowadays, or not nowadays, but, like, kind of a couple of years ago, it was more, yeah, just slap on a multiplayer. And that's it. And, uh, again, like, you're right, it doesn't work. One of the interesting things, though, speaking of multiplayer, you can't really, like, localise it, haha pun, (laughs) you can't localise it really to online, though, because that is something that is kind of, I would say is maybe dying down a bit for, like, at least the AAA shooters. You think? For, not for online ones, but for, like, the couch co-op multiplayer oh, yeah. because one of the examples and again i know i'm bashing halo but halo 5 well i'm sure it was halo 5 but i could be wrong where i think they had like multiplayer co-op but not land yeah. like you know you couldn't invite your friend over not that you would not that you would these days but in like, the before time in the before time uh, yeah in the simpler times <laughs> Where you could invite a friend over and, you know, get them to play like a first person shooter. Or Deadly Premonition, but that's another podcast. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, there seems to be, unless it's like a, I don't know, because we were talking about this last week with indie games and things, where it seems as if those kind of like genres are, you know, they have more of a focus on like couch co-op and things like that. Oh yeah. yeah. Whereas games like shooters, and don't get me wrong. Like not all, like I'm I'm kind of painting this with a wide brush, you know. I mean, maybe there are like games out there that do have multiplayer modes and things like that, but it feels as if nowadays they're kind of moving away from that and you know just doing like you know like multiplayer online. That's what they're focusing on rather than kind of that LAN experience. Yeah, which is a bit of a shame if I'm honest, because it's I mean it don't definitely get me. Is. Like, in this day and age, don't get me wrong, in this day and age, uh, we do depend, obviously, a lot more, like, on the internet and online play. It's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to just flick on your console, just, you know, do matchmaking, and then that's it. You know, you get connected to Jim from Missouri or whatever, (laughs) who's also (laughs) playing the same game. I don't know, Jim's a very popular character tonight. But, you know, he's, like, he's playing the same game as well. You can just, you know, fight against one another, then the new, like, algorithm thing that's changing. See, that's another thing. I think, I don't know if it's the same for a lot of games now, but I remember when you used to play games like Modern Warfare 2 and things, and you could stay in the same lobby, and you would just, like, you would just stick with the same people, and you you would just go through, like, each, you know, game with the same people, and if you didn't like it, then you could obviously quit, and then hope that you didn't get, like, sorted back into that group. Whereas, with a lot of games, like, I think it's more for, kind of, competitive games, but Call of Duty have started to do it now. Like, Overwatch definitely does it, where it takes you out of the lobby, and then it shoves you back in to, like, another lobby based on your matchmaking skills. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's really annoying, because it's like, one game, like, you could be fighting, and you could get, like, 20, you know, 50 kills or whatever, and be like, yeah, I'm on top of the world! and then you get into the next one and you're just getting pummeled with you know cluster strikes with you know (laughs) orbital bombardment whatever game you're playing you just get absolutely wrecked and yeah it's like it's not a fun experience and that that's the thing though like the online scene is always going to be changing whereas at least with single player i mean i'm not saying like you know game should be only single player like i mean if you look at time splitters that has that's a very weird uh multiplayer like is that not like team deathmatch or sorry time splitters two and um three there is definitely deathmatch mm-hmm. there's there anything else it's been a long time since i've got been yeah there, so. no same <laughs> Definitely, no. definitely need to, but mm-hmm. you're not. Unfortunately, in the world that we live in right now, it's <laughs> it's not. It's impossible to do it at times. So it's multiplayer, yeah. but yeah, we definitely death match as you said. Because mm-hmm. it's just that idea of convenience, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, compared to trying to you know schedule it with your friends, and if your friends can't make it, I mean, yeah. it's not going to stop you playing the game. But yeah, again, it's like that. that as I said, you know, just convenience. But I mean, what's your take on it? No, it's it's funny because. <laughs> I've kind of gone. I've kind of gone through a change now. 
um, where I used to be like, I used to be really into multiplayer shooters. And that was like, that was my bread and butter. And that's why I really, yeah. really, like, that's why I did with the Call of Duties. I said Battlefield 1. And I suppose Battlefield 1 might have been the last real one for me. I think after that, I've kind of fallen away from multiplayer shooters. Even the, even the new Call, even the newer Call of Duties mm-hmm. that I've enjoyed, it's majoritively the single player <laughs> that I've played, <laughs> I have to admit. Like, I've mm-hmm. obviously, I've played some multiplayer. I've played some with you. I've played some mm-hmm. with uh, Sp- uh, Spanx. I've played some with uh, Green Shield. Others as well. But it's more the single player I spent more time on now. And I think maybe that's maybe that's just partly me now. This is what I'm, I'm looking for. I, to be an annoying trend for me, that's something that I don't like now, is that, I, especially in the Call of Duties, I find the multiplayer is starting to subsume the single player story. Yeah. Like I, 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 I was absolutely, I was so, I was so annoyed when I found out that like the Warzone, like the, the Modern Warfare Warzone, had been basically carrying on like the story of the single player, mm-hmm. and, then I, and then I happened to see this like cutscene on on YouTube where it mm-hmm. showed. Um, I'll, I'll, I'm going into spoilers here, so apologies. You can mute for a minute. You don't want to know any <laughs> spoiler any track, yeah. hot spoilers yeah. here, but yeah. So like at the end of the Modern Warfare story. Um, in the new one, the 2019 one, mm-hmm. they mentioned that uh, what's his name, uh, Victor Zakaev, mm-hmm. is you know like the big bad, and you know it's he's, he's, he's like the one behind pulling the strings and everything. And I was like, oh, okay, so that's what it's going to be like the, the villain in the next one. Mm-hmm. Then I happened to see this like cutscene for um <laughs> on YouTube for mm-hmm. it, end of it, and it it showed like Captain Price killing off Victor Zakaev in the thing it was to do with the Warzone story. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh what? So so, so the story's just so what? Like this has been carried on in Warzone, so. Well, what the hell are you going to do in the, in the sequel? Like, you know, is this just going to be completely different now? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, for me, it just really annoyed me because, like, I was really kind of looking forward to that and invest in doing that. But it seems like the whole story has been carried on in Warzone. But to me, like, there's no... If I play a match of Warzone, it's not, I don't feel like I'm progressing in a story. You know, I'm just... You know, I'm not saying Warzone is not fun. Like, I've had mm-hmm. fun playing Warzone and, and things like that. But to me, it's not the same as playing a story campaign. No. Like, I, mean, like I, I don't feel like I'm progressing anywhere with it. Yeah, I was going to say, would you believe that they actually have done something similar in the past, not for Call of Duty, but for Halo? And they did that through a thing called Spartan Ops in Halo 4. Oh, I remember you telling me this actually. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, so kind of just to give a quick recap, you know, you go through the whole game and then there's like this whole like sub story, which I think you can play through it in order now, like in the Master Chief collection, but you couldn't yeah. back then, obviously, because it was just all you had were the three originals and then the spin-offs and everything, and then you had four. And you had to log in every so often and they would like rotate the stories. So if, like, you missed a week, you know, because of life or whatever, or maybe it was, like, two weeks, I can't remember, there was, like, a window anyway to be able to play this story. And if you missed it, then that was it. You, yeah. like, you missed, like, huge chunks of it. And obviously now you can, like, look up on YouTube and everything, but that's not the point. It's, like, there wasn't even, like, an option to play through it as far as I know. I could be yeah, wrong. No, like, uh, maybe not. I missed it. But as far as I remember, there wasn't an option. And it is, again, that idea of continuing, you know, this huge, bombastic story. And you're like, uh, <laughs> it's like, yeah, I mean, you can continue, but... And I mean, at least, I'll, I'll give games like Gears of War credit, at least with those, they keep it kind of consistent, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, the whole story, at least, is on its own tangent. Like, you don't have to play, you know, Gears of War, and I'm going to go back and t- say it, you know, Gears of War, Jim, where uh, it's about a guy who, you know, does take away on the planet and everything, and then <laughs> all of a sudden the locust invades and he has to fight off to find his family. You know, there's none of that. I mean, even with Jim, Judgment. That like that's a full game on its own right. Same with yeah. ODST and Halo, but yeah, you know, like that is a full game. That's not like a whole mode. But I do agree, and especially for such an iconic character in Call of Duty as Imran yeah. Sakia. So just like for kind of context, he was the main bad guy in Modern Warfare. So like just, the... just before I stop you there, it's not actually Imran. It's Victor. It's his son. Oh, is it Victor? Oh, <laughs> yeah. So right, it's, Vic- okay, it's Victor's case. It's, it's the son. Yeah, oh, yeah. So Imran. Oh I, yeah. I don't think Imran's appeared yet. So they might yeah. be saving him. I thought they killed him off. That's the thing. They, I think they did. Say, I think they. I think they said yeah. like a thing like he's dead. But I'm gonna. I'm gonna presume that he probably. He'll probably be the one that comes back. Yeah. The, the, he'll like probably set, escape or something. But yeah. yeah. But yeah, it just seems like a weird kind of choice, as you say, to continue. <laughs> it's like one of the characters. I won't spoil it, but one of the characters who you can play as is like an online, you know, avatar. Right again, kind of mini spoilers, but he ends up dying in the Modern Warfare campaign, and then. 
on the online he like just comes back because they they just wanted his like skin back for the online campaign and it always lost like he gets lost in a big explosion like this whole factory blows up and all he loses is like a leg so it's like you know that scene out of um the simpsons where I, i think it's the simpsons where it's like i thought you were dead nope <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> and that's it it's just like nope and it's like okay that's it yeah he's he's alive now okay no explanation and that's the thing though it's like why would you try to make a story in multiplayer when it's not like i mean i mean i can admire them trying to do like a story for multiplayer but i mean yeah like in the words of blade runner it's just gonna get lost to time <laughs> like tears <laughs> in the rain and all that it's gonna get lost yeah. through that you know i like, guess it's just an attempt to like tie it in. i guess it's an yeah. attempt to like more than a bigger thing mm-hmm. um which is probably fair because it's probably where the money is now to be honest it's probably where yeah. they're making a lot of their money through that so i can mm-hmm. suppose i can understand from from that perspective but mm-hmm. i don't know to me to me it kind of cheap maybe i sound like some total like cranky old purist here or something yeah. but like i don't know to me it cheapens the story not not to not to advocate segregation, but keep keep, keep single player and multiplayer separate. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> No, it's true, because it's as you said, I mean, one of the things that annoys me, and again, I know we're kind of ranting about code in this case, but the the thing that I noticed about that is that they are trying to push a lot more multiplayer, yeah. you know, like aspects, like especially with Warzone, if you download, and again, I'm not advocating for this whatsoever, <laughs> but if you were to download Modern Warfare or whatever onto your Xbox, PlayStation, you won't get like an avatar or a your thumbnail of modern warfare you'll get one for warzone oh god yeah and that really confuses me because it's like 90 percent of it is warzone and then you get 10 percent that's just like a kind of like they've cut off the corner and it's like you know captain price like peering over as if yeah. oh what's this game i have never seen that before like if that you look at really yeah like <laughs> Maybe it's just like me being very picky, but it's like I played Battlefront, uh, as I said, Republic Commando, Battlefield even um, as well, you know. I mean, even if you played a game like Rainbow Six Siege, like you're not going to have like, you know, like, you know, oh, multiplayer, look at us. Or, I mean, even if you look at military simulators and things, you see, that's another thing as well. Like military sims, when you think of them. Point, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, granted, they're a whole genre in their own right, but that, I, I suppose would you include them as like a class? Oh yeah, they're definitely shooters. Yeah, they're like, yeah. I mean mm-hmm. that's that's what ninety nine percent of yeah. you know. <laughs> if you're true. not if you're not shooting, you're yeah. going somewhere to shoot something. So yeah. I definitely say it's like a, a shooter. <laughs> Aye. If you're not, you're going to shoot someone or you're going to die. Cause it's... Or you're tactically telling your your squad yeah. how to shoot somebody. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, tactically like... in the nicest way possible. You know? Yeah, like... tactically, how can I put bullets in this person? Yeah, with, <laughs> with luck, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> with, with luck and hope and a prayer. But yeah, I mean, even with those games... Uh at least uh, it's kind of an advertising thing like i mean i know we kind of talked like briefly touched on like Fortnite and things and i haven't downloaded it or anything but from what i remember of you know like seeing other people play it and things at least they're kind of focusing on the brand if you know what i mean yeah because it almost feels as if games like Call of Duty, compared to like, you know, as I said, you know, Battlefront, Battlefield, Arma, um, even that new squad game, which does look interesting. I'll need to have a check at that. They're so drastically different. Like, either you can go into games like, <laughs> going back to, you know, a phrase that I said at the beginning of this, you know, rooting, tooting, shooting, <laughs> compared to, you know, like slow and methodical you know like being able to talk to your teammates and be like right okay we're going to breach this house we're going to do this and that and again yeah. going back to like republic commando even then you can do that or even if you look at games like dead space where it's like you can you know take the game slowly the game's kind of forcing you to go slowly because of you know the like the danger or the fear that something's going to jump out at you And it is, like, all those different kinds of, you know, those different kinds of games that kind of have this, as you said, this umbrella term of being a shooter game and kind of being more than that. Yeah. But when it comes to COD, I don't feel as if, you know, I feel as if almost they're just becoming Warzone now. Yeah, it does seem to be. Because, I mean, even with the campaign, and again, we've got a whole, like, podcast episode on this as well, like, for the Black Ops series, but the long and the short of it is, I was not a big fan. You could definitely tell, like, it had its good moments, but you could definitely tell there were, like, rushed, you know, parts, and 
I mean, the game yeah. was an absolute mess when it came out. Same with Battlefield 4, where I kid you not, when I played it online for the very first time, I was playing it during the time there was a lot of like terrible bugs. You could get killed by someone who had zero health. How that worked out, I don't know. And there was one moment where I literally got locked into place. So I was running... <laughs> like sideways I couldn't turn it wasn't my controller or anything because as soon as I got killed and I respawned like I could turn and I could do everything it was just so weird <laughs> just... servers were servers were notoriously bad on that one when it uh-huh. first came out about before I remember yeah it was absolutely horrific it was awful it's <sighs> That's the thing though, like, if you're putting your eggs into one basket, and I think even Warzone is getting to that stage, the stage where essentially, how to even put it with Warzone, like, it's laggy, it's bloated, it's just all over the place, it's, it's not a good experience at times, and the fact is, like, see if you get killed, like, it takes a good 5 to 10 minutes to get back into a game, Yeah, you know, at least I suppose... Around. Like, at least with a single player, or, you know, at least with kind of fast-paced multiplayer or death matches in any game, like, not even for CODs, like, any game, um, you know, at least you're kind of back into the action really quick. And don't get me wrong, this is probably my personal preference of just wanting, like, either a quick game or if I'm going to dedicate time to it, then I'm going to kind of take it slow and, you know, steady, rather than, you know, rushing into Verdansk and just being shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just completely. And, but kind of summing up, though, what what would you say? Like, would you say a game should have single player or multiplayer as its focus, like, for a shooter? Because I know that's kind of a broad thing to... Like, I think it really... Ask. Yeah, you know what? I think it yeah. really depends. Mm-hmm. It really depends what you're trying to sell. Like, for something like Fortnite, mm-hmm definitely multiplayer oh like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. where that's where it should be that's mm-hmm. where the focus should be in every oh absolutely um yeah. well for something i would i was almost arguing for something like a doom or something single player mm-hmm. because that's that's where you're it's, it's where your strengths lie isn't it you know yeah. like, as we say fortnite strengths are really in its like customization its characters the fact that it's been able mm-hmm. to assemble like you know that you can have like thanos fighting john wick you know at this point like that's a big mm-hmm. strength of, of fortnite yeah I'm sure for people and stuff. So definitely that works better in multiplayer. But something like mm-hmm. Doom 2016, where its its action was like it, it had to re- it worked best in single player because you couldn't they couldn't replicate it. You know, it's not possible to replicate it into the multiplayer. So mm-hmm. focus on your single player. You know, it's possible to something like Call of Duty. I would say Call of Duty keep like keep a single player, but keep a multiplayer as well. Like split mm-hmm. your focus as you've been doing for a long time. But mm-hmm. just don't. For me, it's like don't cheapen one for the other. So like just you know if you've got a single player story, just leave it yeah. there and. And you don't. Do we really need like? A, maybe people disagree with me on this one, but do we really need like some overarching reason to you know to, to play multiplayer or to, to play yeah. like a battle royale? Like you know, mm. maybe 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 people do. Maybe you do, and maybe that's why some of these games are, are staying successful. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. For me, like I'm like it's a multiplayer match. You know, the, the 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 appeal for me is the is the addictive gameplay and stuff. And I'm like, oh, you know, I can jump into a match and you know like. Mm-hmm. You know, run around, run and gun, and everything like that. Or Warzone, you know, you can get in and you you, you can be a bit more tactical. You know, yeah. but you have the same, you have the frenetic gunfights as well, with the added like tension of you know the shrinking map and everything. You don't really need the story. You don't really yeah. need like an overarching story there. So I I I I I I think games should focus on both if they want to, but just don't mm-hmm. like just don't make one subservient to the other to its detriment. Mm-hmm. You know, if that makes sense. Because one of the interesting things, I'm kind of just picking up on something you said earlier when you said about feeling as if you're part of something bigger. Yeah. Or like, you know, when you go online. And it's true because when you're playing single player, you do, it's basically a power fantasy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, even if you look at games like, this is going to sound like an obscure one, but you know Warhammer, the Space Marine game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's literally called Space Marine, where you play as a big, Literally a big beefy <laughs> space <laughs> marine in this like ridiculous sized armor. It's basically like a homicidal Buzz Lightyear. Okay, <laughs> it's, you know you're fighting all these orcs and things, and you're just crushing. It's completely a power fantasy. Um, you know yeah. ridiculous proportions, and it's the same with Doom as well. You know, again, big beefy guy in armor, just punching things. You know, 
blasting people away and everything and you know it's yeah. like satisfying because you know there's like that feedback and things like that and even the call of duty games and battlefield you know those military games where you're kind of the superhero and for the most part you know you're like this super soldier like in this michael bay set because it's like what you were saying with them um, i haven't played it but like with world of war 2 for call of duty where it's all these like huge set pieces like i've seen one where it's like i think you rescue someone and a train blows up or something oh, like God, that yeah, and yeah. it like it goes over you and because i mean at least like with the original ones even with the original ones they kept it grounded like if you look at world at war for example you know and that was like like at the end of the day i think they actually got a perfect balance with that like especially with the russian campaign yeah for that and i'm only going to touch briefly on this because this could be like its own episode <laughs> but it was like you were just like a small cog in this you know like larger machine but at the same time you were responsible for keeping like key characters alive for yeah. the end and because you kept them alive they like in turn managed to help you defeat the enemy and yeah like the, there was a perfect balance there whereas so in single player, yeah, as like just this power fantasy, whereas in online play, <laughs> unless you're good at the game, yeah, it's not going to be a power fantasy. <laughs> it's more going to be like a power nightmare, um, where you're just constantly getting destroyed, like in every round and things, and you're just like, what is going on here? <laughs> I was good in the single player. That's something I keep asking myself. I'm like, I was good in the single player. Why am I not good yeah. here? It's like, yeah, because yeah, because people are better online. They actually zigzag away from you. You know. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> And, yeah, I, I do agree. Like, I mean, Call of Duty did try it, mind you. They tried it with Black Ops 4, and I don't think it worked very well to translate to just solely multiplayer. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, the the thing, my kind of final argument on it would be that if it doesn't have, like, a single player, then it could rob, like, a lot of people of, like, a fair chance at a shooter game. Like, what I mean by that okay. is, you know, like, you can have, like, all the multiplayer games you want, but, you know, let's say you've not got a good connection, or, you know, and I know technically this is kind of things outside, you know, the like, the publishers and their, you know, grasp, you know, they can't control how fast your internet is. But, I mean, if you can, like, you know, stick in a game, play, like, the original Battlefront 2, you don't have to go online for that. You can just kind of experience that as it is. And I yeah. feel as if that gives it, like... I don't want to be pretentious and say it gives it that immortality, you know? <laughs> but it gives that that kind of nostalgic basis, you know, that you can say, oh, I'm not feeling like Warzone tonight, maybe I'll just play, you know, Battlefront, or, you know, just like any of the single-player campaigns that you used to enjoy when you were younger. Even Goldeneye. Like, yeah. don't get me wrong, that did not age well. Um, neither did Rogue Agent, but that's, yeah, that's another topic. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, uh, definitely there needs to be a balance, but I feel as if, if the balance is tipped, then you're, you're going to have troubles. Especially yeah. for shooter games, because, I mean, I know I've kind of said it, but there is that perception of people thinking, oh, you know, oh, it's just a mindless shooter, you know, let's go from point A to point B to do this and that, and I've been guilty of that, I have to say, like, looking at a game and not taking it seriously, or as yeah. seriously, and thinking, oh, I'm going to quickly no-scope as a joke, when there's, like, a serious thing going on, and it's like... I mean, even games like Titanfall 2, I have to admit, I never played the multiplayer, but I have heard good things about it. But I mean, even the story in that and, like, the design as well, like, it, it was kind of that perfect balance. Everyone seems to say that it's that perfect balance of having a good, you know, single player and also having that good multiplayer that translates. Yeah. And with games like Apex, this is a weird thing. So apparently, something I didn't realise was that Apex is apparently in the same world as Titanfall. Oh, really? Apparently. I, I genuinely didn't know this until someone pointed it out. Was Where's like, oh. did I? Yeah, I was like, oh, interesting. So, it, it's kind of weird, because although Titanfall 2 isn't, like, it's widely regarded, like, in shooter, kind of, like, shooter game communities, but at the same time, you know, it kind of lives on through Apex. Yeah. And it's like, at least if Titanfall, like, finally rolls over and, you know, eventually dies or its servers, you know, no longer operate, at least it's got the option to transfer over to Apex and be like, oh, we're going to have Titans in this game now, or oh, we're going to do this and that, you know. It is, it's like given that opportunity, essentially. Yeah. I, I think that's neat. 
but well, we'll see no, how it goes. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. <laughs> so, yeah, as always, thank you all so, so much for joining us tonight on this, of course, very lovely evening. Totally pretending it is not raining outside as I say this. <laughs> if you want to catch me and see me on other platforms, you can see me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and of course Twitch under the name Satsunami42. If you also want to join our Discord server, you can search for us. You can look at my Twitter profile as well, there'll be a link there for it. Um, we are, of course, known as the Satsunami Society. So if you want to join and become a Pandalorian, then yeah, feel free to drop by. It is a very welcoming community and we are all just awesomely supportive of one another and totally not biased. <laughs> Adam, tell tell everyone listening I'm not biased. He's not <laughs> From, biased. <laughs> thank you. You can as come far on. As you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you. You can come on the chat next week. Um, so anyway. <laughs> so yeah, as always, guys, uh, stay safe, stay awesome, and most importantly, stay hydrated. And we'll see you again next week. Bye, guys. Bye.